Now I-525s are brilliant irons. I will not say otherwise, but there is a major problem when you're gonna buy a full set. Don't do it until you watch this video. So this is all about on-course testing, all about reality. I'll back it up with data, we'll go indoors later and we'll find out what the true statistics are on these two clubs. The two clubs being the Ping I-525, incredible good set of irons. You've seen the video, you've seen my opinion of them already this week, I think they're unreal. They also perform unreal throughout the bag and I'm talking about from short irons into long irons, which again, I think is unusual, certainly in my hands. But there's one thing you should not do when you buy this set of irons, in my opinion. Do not buy a full set, and here's why. The irons in question, the I-525s, but in particular, I'm talking about the long end of the bag. In my hand is the five iron. One of the biggest surprises I got when testing the I-525s was how good or how easy it was to launch the five iron and get a distance that give me gapping in that long end of the bag, which I often struggle with. So I struggle with club head speed in generating from five, six, into that four iron, those gaps between them. I never really see much difference. And I did with the five iron and it launched the ball incredibly high. We were getting like a 190, 195 carry. I don't normally do that with five iron in hand, but I still feel there's a possible major problem in that long end of the bag. And I'll explain as we go on. But first of all, let's see if we can find a fairway with the five iron, and then we'll switch over to what I think might be a solution to the problem that I would envisage for most average golfers. Just come right at tad. Oh, up. oh, we just hit the end of the tree and moved over to the right hand side. We still managed to get middle of the fairway, but as you've seen from that, Really easy clip, sounds fantastic. No great swing speed as ever from the average golfer and the ball has absolutely flew. So what's the problem, And You see, the problem is long irons are difficult to play. No matter what set you've got in your bag, five irons, four irons, they're difficult for average golfers. And no matter how good the I-525s are in terms of that long end of the bag, and they are good, there is still better options for average golfers. And they lie in the form of a hybrid. And I'll show you exactly why you should be dismissing your longer irons and get those hybrids in your bag. So the major thing that I want to point out to any average golfer is a very simple thing that I think most of us would be very much aware of. I'm stating the obvious right now, but at address, surely there is a huge amount of confidence gained from having bulk and mass behind the ball. So when you put a five iron in these I-525s up against the ball, it's asking a bit of a question. You've got a longer shaft in hand, you've got a thinner top line, and all of a sudden you might be doubting your ability a little bit. Then you put the hybrid down, and for whatever reason, like I said, it's a mental game. Golf is hugely all about what's in the head. But between the ears, I see one thing. I see bulk and mass, which means I don't have to make as much of an effort in terms of my swing in the club. So I steady things down a little bit. And I've already got a whole lot more confidence in my head, which is ultimately leads to gen generally a better performance. So on one level alone, there is hugely more confidence in the hybrid then there is a long iron in the bag, whether it be five iron, four iron, or even six iron for some golfers. Right, so the perfect scenario for me that really sort of uh, asks the question of which of these should be in your bag as an average golfer. And I'm gonna also refer back to some data we collected earlier on both of these two clubs when I play this shot, or before I play this shot. We're 200 yards out, We've got a big tree that's in the way there on this par five. It's effectively our second shot. We've got a chance of going for it in two, and like I said, 200 yard carry. My average with the five iron is 195. and just creeping over that 200 with the five hybrid. But forgetting yardages for one minute, look at the peak height of these two shots. So the launch angle is slightly different with both of them, but the peak height and the descent angle are really, really key. And you can see the differences in how high the hybrid gets launches the ball. 
So it launches it, it gets a real peak height, but it's not stalling because we've, and we've got a great descent angle as well. So the two reasons I want to go for, I want to choose the hybrid is because A of what it does, how it gets this ball from A to B in terms of its ball flight, but then more importantly, and especially for average golfers, is the confidence level at address. When I'm faced with that shot that I'm looking down there now, what do I feel will, has got me the best chance of getting that ball up and somewhere near that green? And I think the mass and bulk of that hybrid is the one that's telling me, and that is the club to go for in terms of confidence. It makes me swing that little bit easier. And if you watch the two shots play out, which I'm more than happy with, to be quite honest with you, you'll see the five iron again, good ball flight. Like I said, this thing is performing incredibly well in terms of a long iron. If there's one place on a golf course that tells me which iron or hybrid I would rather have in the bag or should have in the bag, it was right here. Well, I've said to Hannah on a number of occasions throughout this video, in some ways I had it very much before we set out. I had an idea of what I would think we were trying to do and that was to show that those long irons are certainly more difficult for average golfers to use and for the vast majority, without doubt, the hybrid is the way to go in my opinion. But I have also got to say, and I think I said it earlier on the video, is I'm so surprised at how good the i525 i long irons perform this is where we got to that was the uh, that was the iron you can see the hybrid made the green which i'm really impressed with and from that distance out i'd take either of those shots any day of the week but perhaps a little bit surprised at just how well that five iron did on every level like i said ball flight distance all the rest of it so it's kind of whilst i'm going to continue with my push to suggest that more average golfers use hybrids I also think that I can't continue, I can't knock this i525 or something. It clearly does incredibly well, surprisingly well. Now there's one other thing to mention about hybrids and why they're really important in terms of your uh, flexibility of golf bag. And that's the fact that a lot of them nowadays, and in particular this G425 that I'm using, are adjustable. So wherever you find your situation, like I have with my numbers earlier, this is slightly longer the five hybrid than the five iron. If that's the number or the gap I'm looking to make, there's obviously a lot of flexibility in de-lofting or adding loft into your hybrid far easier than it is to be doing that with your iron set. So the way in which to get your gap in right again is by going down that route of hybrids. And it's that key word again, it's that flexibility. Well, you can see there two totally different ball flights. First one you're watching is that five iron and you can see it's done incredibly well from the rough because that's the next thing I want to talk about. Who wants to play 200 yards from a lie? And that wasn't even sort of nestled down, but we know the flexibility that a hybrid offers over an iron. And I've got to admit, yet again, megally impressed with how that ball, of the iron picked up the ball out of that uh, sort of light rough, got the ball up and out there, but the ball flight again, a little low. And even if it's coming into the green, I did just landed at front edge, then still, it's gonna either run all the way back through. It's gonna to be tough to stop. That land angle just isn't there. You've seen the hybrid. I've leaked the shot out slightly to the right-hand side, but it's so, so different in its ball flight. And yet again, just shows how easy it is to not only pick it up and get it out of that slightly rough lie, but what it does in terms of launch and ball flight, it's still there and still gives you a chance of stopping on these greens. So yet again, another reason why five irons, four irons, don't really belong in many average golfers bags and why hybrids are by far a better option. That's me done in terms of testing out here on the course. At the very end of the video, I'll throw you the data that I collected for, for both clubs on quite a number of shots and you'll see sort of how we got to A to B. The biggest difference was, like I said, um, peak height, descent angle, really key things in how that ball, yes, got to 200 yards-ish, 
but got there in totally different ways. And they were one of the reasons why, from a descent angle and from a peak height perspective, for me, the hybrid again favours the uh, average golfer and just shows that again with similar lofts it can get a much better uh, launch angle or peak height or get the ball airborne which again what we struggle with with the longer irons. We've seen the scenarios around the course I think for me again what we've tried to do is highlight where from a confidence perspective from a percentages perspective the hybrid will always favour in my opinion the average golfer than it will rather than a long iron. Also with these videos, the idea is there's no definitive answers that I'm looking to give. There's plenty of good golfers out there or plenty of golfers out there full stop that would prefer to use an iron. And if that's where your confidence lies, then I say stick with that. And in the i525s in particular, they do it incredibly well. Probably the best performing long iron in terms of five iron that I've tested. It gets the ball up and airborne and out there very, very well indeed. So I'm not saying dismiss the five iron, all I am saying is in most cases, hybrids are the answer for me. For average golfers from six iron into five, four, I reckon you should be considering hybrids a lot more often than we do. And don't just be buying that straightforward, historical way that we've always done, which is pre-order a, a pitching wedge to five iron, a pitching wedge to four iron. Stop doing that. Start to have a look at that uh, longer end of the bag and see how you can make some changes that might make the game a little bit easier for you. Right, that's me done. Another test complete. Thank you for watching. As ever, tell me about your experiences. Have I got this wrong? Have I got this right? What is your thoughts? Comments down below. Hit that like button. Subscribe if you don't already. And I will see you all very soon. Bye for now.